And I call on the member for Bowman. Well, Deputy Speaker, if we're going to make any progress in this place, we don't need a debate between two sides of the chamber that are reading notes about standard therapy that is now old news. I mean, very importantly, on the government side of this debate, I would hope that they would realise that there is now triple therapy that involves protease inhibitors that has more than doubled the treatment rates. But what we've had from the previous speaker is just old generation treatment propositions for the simple reason that her very own government hasn't funded the triple therapy that's freely available and funded in a number of other economies. This is a government that has completely traduced the role of the Pharmaceutical Benefits Advisory Committee. Because no sooner do you, uh, you invoke the advice of experts, but you also have to follow that advice. But this is a government that's finally unhitched and uncoupled expert advice from the PBAC from their own decisions in Cabinet. I mean, Deputy Speaker, what we have here is a government that is more worried about their own fiscal outlook and more worried about delivering a surplus June 30 next year than they are about the viral threats that people living with hep C face. Because there is excellent triple therapy available. We understand very well now their implications even in the most complex of patients, either with serious cirrhosis or post-liver transplant. And work has been done in France with early access to these drugs now that's years old. There were 6,500 people who went to Barcelona that that previous speaker referred to and talked about the role of triple therapy. And there was a statement made about a commitment to making sure that it's available for very, very good reason. I mean, there are 300,000 Australians who live with hep C. 226,000 of them, of course, uh, have more than just the antibody response, but a genuine clinical disease. Now, half of them may be lucky enough not to have symptoms. But let me make one fact very clear. Every year that this government delays and dithers on world standard uh, care that has been ticked off and approved by our expert committee represents hundreds of people in this country dying of liver cirrhosis and a handful will die of hepatocellular carcinoma. So let's not have any more speeches from this side of the house reading off talking points, talking about standard therapy that's 10 years old. The work has been done. It's been extensively evaluated. We know now there's even more in the pipeline coming through, new drugs that have even lower side effects, lower levels of anemia, less need to treat uh, with uh, uh, thrombocytopenic uh, treatments like uh, I think it's L-trombogad, -trombo -trombo which is the treatment to basically push up production of platelets and reduce the need to lower um, uh, levels of protease inhibitors, which then obviously uh, reduces your risk of, of, of a successful treatment and getting control of your viral load. But no, we've got a government that's going to go in circles. And if these next two speakers, I put a call out to you. There actually is new treatment available. Acknowledge it in your speeches. It's been through your very own PBAC. Acknowledge that and give us the dates. And now talk about where the excuses lie for not moving ahead and helping these Australians have the world-class care that could be accessed if you're a citizen of another country, but not here. Now, what we are seeing in this uncoupling, Deputy Speaker, is a breaking up of the PBAC as we know it, from authorised treatments that get ticked off to a new world where they get ticked off by the PBAC, but no, they don't get funded over here by this government. Now, I can appreciate there's been times when vaccines worth hundreds of millions of dollars were subject to ATAGI delays, but this is PBAC and this is not a large amount of money for the, for the uncertainty, the risk of chronic disease and ultimately of death that are faced by people with hep C. And I acknowledge the previous speaker for pointing out that uh, uh, almost a fifth of them um, have not been involved in injecting drug use, despite the stigma that is attached to that activity. And many of these people only did that once. Let's stop treating them like they're second-class citizens. Let's acknowledge that the treatments are now available, extensively evaluated. It's called triple therapy. And they've done an enormous amount of work around the world. And so patients in Australia, there's 226,000 of them, would simply say to this government, what do we have to do? I mean, do we have to have another World Hep C Day? on July 28 next year, where this treatment is not available. Now, we have massive privacy issues already, reaching out to these patients. They're hard enough to find in many cases because five years ago they were told the treatment's too toxic and unpleasant. So don't worry about it. You don't need to be treated. You'll probably be OK. But look, every year matters and every month matters. And I just say to the next two uh, speakers, because I know their heart is in the right place here, go back and talk to your very own treasurer. Because I will say once and I'll say it again, the fiscal problems that are self-induced. I mean, the fiscal pain that this government is facing next year with your, your effectively snookered on your promise to have a budget surplus should never trump the people sitting behind me and the people around Australia who just look to Australia with our world-class PBAC to make the drugs available through a simple tick 
of this government's cabinet, and to this time it has not occurred.